The Sun. The star at the center of our solar system is responsible for making life on Earth possible. It is as volatile as it is beautiful, with temperatures reaching over 1 million degrees Celsius. One would think that any object or spacecraft that ventured anywhere near would be easily incinerated, leaving nothing behind. In Greek mythology, Icarus, ignoring his father's warnings to not fly too closely to this heavenly body, met his end when his wings melted, causing him to plummet to the sea. How, then, could mankind ever hope to get close enough to touch the sun and further study the celestial star? Miraculously, the Parker Solar Probe has accomplished the impossible and survived. Uncover more secrets of the universe by clicking like, subscribe, and hitting the bell icon so that you don't miss what we find next. Corona. Named after the Latin term for crown, the corona is the outermost layer of the sun. It extends millions of kilometers into space, forming the sun's upper atmosphere, even hotter than the sun's surface temperature of 5,600 degrees Celsius. The corona and its solar winds rage at average temperatures of 1 to 2 million degrees Celsius with the hottest regions reaching all the way up to nearly 20 million degrees Celsius. But how can the crown of the sun be hotter than the sun itself? The second law of thermodynamics states that, in a natural thermodynamic process, the sum of the entropies of the interacting thermodynamic systems never decreases. Simply stated, heat does not spontaneously pass from a colder body to a warmer one. So how is it that the atmosphere of the sun can be hotter than the surface? Researchers don't precisely know why, but speculate that millions of nanoflares, or tiny explosions, happening at the solar surface are causing the increased temperatures. Another theory is that the constant fluid motion of the sun's surface creates complex magnetic fields that extend up into the corona. These electromagnetic waves could be the root cause of the corona's extreme heat. At such terrifyingly high temperatures, how could the Parker Solar Probe survive? To answer this, we must look at the difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of all of the atoms or molecules of that substance. Essentially, it's a distribution of how fast the particles are moving or vibrating. Heat, on the other hand, is the transfer of kinetic energy from one medium or object to another. Simply put, it is the total energy the vibrating particles can transfer. The surface of the sun has a high particle density, which means the particles are packed tightly together. So even though the surface has a lower temperature than the corona, it has a higher heat value. But the corona has a low particle density, meaning the particles have more room to move around. This means that even with the corona's particles vibrating at an incredibly high rate, resulting in astronomical temperatures, there is a lower heat measurement due to the sparse density. We can easily illustrate this comparison by thinking of an oven versus a pot of boiling water. While the temperature may be the same, the heat is far different due to particle density. If your hand touched a pot of boiling water, you would surely pull it away within a nanosecond of contact due to the heat your hand would experience. Take that same hand and put it into the open cavity of a heated oven, and you could withstand the heat for a considerably longer period of time. The boiling water's particle density is much greater than that of the oven. The open space of the oven allows the particles more room to roam, even though they could be vibrating at the same temperature of the boiling water. This prevents your hand from being instantly burned. While this analogy helps us understand the concept of how something could withstand incredibly high temperatures, the Parker Solar Probe is not a hand in the oven and the sun can hardly be compared to anything on Earth. This technological wonder has not only kissed the sun, it is already four years into the seven-year orbital mission. Logic would dictate that even a few seconds of exposure to the sun's decimating temperatures would render any craft completely useless. So how has this probe lasted this long? 
And how can we expect it to last another three years? Engineers and scientists announced the development of the probe in 2009 with a price tag of 1.5 billion US dollars. It was launched on August 12, 2018, becoming the first spacecraft to be named after a living person, honoring physicist Eugene Newman Parker, Professor Emeritus at the University of Chicago. Its mission is to gain a better understanding of the sun by providing new data on solar activity, enabling scientists to better forecast major space weather events that can impact life on Earth. But how did scientists create something that wouldn't melt or incinerate within seconds of being in such proximity to the sun? Even though the spacecraft would encounter far fewer particles in the corona than it would on the surface of the sun, how could a man-made contraption withstand such unthinkably high temperatures? The prime answer is Parker's ingenious solar shield. Whilst passing through an atmosphere of over a million degrees Celsius, Parker's sun shield heats to a mere 1,400 degrees Celsius. But how? The Thermal Protection Shield, or TPS, is composed of three parts, two plates and an inner shield. The inner shield is made from a special foam created from carbon composite, and the plates on either side of it are made from reinforced carbon, carbon composite. Able to withstand 1,650 degrees Celsius, the hexagonal shield is only 7 feet 7 inches in diameter and 4.5 inches thick. The most astounding part? The TPS will protect the probe so efficiently that it will be able to maintain a temperature of only 30 degrees Celsius, hardly hotter than the sidewalk on a warm spring day. Without the TPS position between Parker and the Sun, the probe would certainly become damaged and inoperable in only seconds. To make sure the shield is in optimal position to block the high temperatures, Parker is equipped with seven smart sensors that detect direct sunlight. These sensors will communicate with Parker's central computer to correctly reposition the probe's angle if direct light is detected. Parker's solar probe is fittingly powered by the sun. As the craft comes ever closer to our star, the panels will be subject to continuously increasing heat. To combat this, Parker is equipped with a radiator system carrying roughly a gallon of water to circulate through the solar arrays. As the water circulates through the system, it radiates the heat into space, thus cooling the water and the panels. Parker's other secret is special wiring made from niobium superalloys. Discovered by Charles Hatchett in 1801, niobium is a ductile transition metal and when used in superalloys, it comes to a high melting point of 2,470 degrees Celsius. To suspend this wiring, Parker's team at NASA grew special sapphire crystal tubes, which are used in high temperature furnace systems and can maintain their shape and dimensionality in temperatures up to 1,800 degrees Celsius. This is hardly all that makes the Parker Solar Probe a marvel of our time. As it stands, Parker is the fastest object ever created, traveling at 430,000 miles per hour, or 0.064% the speed of light, fast enough to orbit the Earth in approximately six minutes, or travel from Philadelphia to Washington DC in one second. So then, has the Parker Solar Probe done it? Has it actually touched the sun? Technically, yes, as scientists consider the corona part of the sun. However, while it has not actually touched the surface at present, Parker has traveled closer than any other artificial object in existence. And by 2025, Parker will pass within 9.86 solar radii of the sun's surface, which is 4.3 million miles or 6.9 million kilometers. Only time will tell if Parker will actually survive its remaining confrontation with the most dangerous body in our solar system. But NASA has certainly equipped the probe with more than a few mind-boggling tricks to escape death. And who knows, maybe one day, the Parker Probe's data and technology may enable humans to one day kiss the face of the sun. Join us next time as we continue to uncover the mysteries of the cosmos. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a thing.